Highly, these laws relate how much of the program needs to be done sequentially versus how much could be done in parallel. For example, graphics applications tend to be highly parallelizable. In a 3D game, there are often hundreds of thousands of triangles being drawn, but the order that they're drawn isn't so important. A lot of scientific computations are also very parallelizable, with calculations taking place over a large grid, each piece of which can be handled separately from the others. Addressing these types of problems has contributed to the rise of another form of parallelism called grid computing, or more generally, distributed computing, in which physically distinct, often dispersed computers are loosely coupled with one another to tackle distinct pieces of a single problem. Distributed computing can be thought of as a type of parallelism, since computation is being done on various computers at remote locations all at the same time. Let me discuss it for just a minute. The most basic type of distributed application is the remote procedure call, or RPC. A procedure is just a function, and the basic idea is that you're making a typical function call in your program. But, instead of the function executing on your computer, it executes on a remote computer. Often, that remote computer is a server set up to respond to the RPCs. The remote computer might just have more computing power available, or it might have access to data that you don't have on your own machine. The Pyro module, that's P-Y-R-O, is one way to write programs that communicate with each other remotely, through these remote procedure calls. Also, since people don't often have the ability to set up their own servers at remote locations, several companies will host servers for you. Amazon Web Services is one of the most well-known, and there's a module for that called PyCloud, spelled P-I Cloud. Let's reconsider a few of the programs that we've developed in this course. Now, see which of these you think could be made parallel. Remember the program where we looked at weather data to predict temperature and rain for a specific date? We went through a large list of data to find days that matched the date that we cared about. Now, could that be parallel or not? Yes, that could have been parallelized. Although dates do come one after the other in the calendar, here it was okay to check the dates in any order. How about our financial simulation? There are actually two parts to this simulation. First, how about where we were computing account balances over many years, parallel or not? Well, no. Here, each year is dependent on the previous year, so this cannot be parallelized. The years are so chained to each other that we're forced to process earlier years before we can go on to later years. In our financial simulation, we also ran multiple scenarios to get a Monte Carlo simulation of that financial program. So, how about the multiple scenarios, parallel or not? Yes, the multiple scenarios, part of the code, could be parallelized. Each run has its own set of random data, and it's independent of every other run. Simulations where we run the same thing many times just with different random data each time are some of the best cases for massively parallel processing. Okay, how about our word game, where we were doing paired comparisons between words to form a graph in the word game?